Good morning. It is the 14th of May. I made it to a water source here. This is a water tank. You know, obviously algae growing in it. Flocks of birds. Like some sort of finch. I don't know if you can see on the far side there, all coming in to get their water. So here's how these things work. I'm just gonna, they're, you know, a lot of them are very similar. Uh, some are a little bit different. Some have different, you know, holding tanks and etc. But so this is an old windmill, non-functioning as a windmill, obviously, <clears throat> and it has a solar panel there. Solar panel drives an electric motor, which runs the, the original wellhead. You know down underground and so it will pump water up when the Sun hits it in the morning so it's coming out of the wellhead and it goes down that pipe so if I'd been here earlier today uh, like when the Sun first came up if I'd done it a little better I probably could have been here uh, so this is that same pipe you know, coming from the wellhead here and it comes down and it empties into the tank yeah um, so the cattle could come in and the cattle can drink right out of this this tank sometimes there's a intermediate holding tank that you know has a float and it distributes water etc is needed and then this has a little overflow here, right? This thing, water can come in and it goes down this other black pipe hose and it goes and it empties out into that pond. So that's where the overflow, and I can tell that water has been flowing uh, this morning out of that outflow hose which means water was flowing into the tank earlier today. Probably has a cutoff switch on this, on this electric motor, so it only operates, you know, for a while. But, uh, yeah, didn't get here to get sort of the fresh well water, so I'm going to have to get the algae. Still, this is, you know, this is a... Well, I would I would rate this as two stars for the CDT as a as a water source. Obviously, going to have to treat it. Going to be heading back off that way. See a couple sort of like mesas there. Going to be heading actually that one right there, I think. And uh, going to try to go over that. I need to calculate now when the next water source is, and it. Uh, I don't know if it's 15 miles, 20 miles, something like that. So it might be like a full bag of water coming from here. Um, cause the next water that I know about, because, you know, I don't have these comments on gut hooks is, uh, the ranger station, which someone told me from looking at their gut hooks has, their, their spigot is on so I need to calculate how many miles that is and therefore how much water I need to carry you know like am I gonna get there at the end of the day or mid-afternoon that kind of thing so yeah so I've done the calculation now it appears I'm 19 miles from the ranger station so that's as much water as I can carry which is probably gonna be like seven liters or close to it okay today's road march is brought to you by New Mexico Department of Transportation in the form of Highway 117 because I lost my earphones what would be a good pastime here along these road walks is uh, you know a podcast or a book on tape 
don't have that. Well, I do have that, but can't listen to it without the headphones. I, I suppose I could put it on the speaker, but I don't. Uh, anyway, so I'm amusing myself by singing out loud the Colonel Bogey March. You may remember that from the theme song from Bridge on the River Kwai, which my father said uh, they had to whistle it. They didn't normally whistle it during World War II, but they had to whistle it in a movie because the lyrics were obscene. Well, pretty, pretty close. Yeah. If you know the words, you know. If you don't, you can always look them up. Great propaganda. Anyway, moving on to the, uh, there's a picnic area coming up here. I'm hoping there, have a place to sit down, maybe even some shade. So my only respite from the road walking out there, so it's called the Narrows Road Trail. The Narrows is this area that lava flowed, uh, apparently not that long ago, geologically speaking, 1,500 years ago, up against a mesa, so it carved a sort of a channel. Um, that's what 117 goes through. I'll be seeing it from a bird's eye view, and uh, yeah, I'm liking this already. I may come to regret this. <laughs> it's 4.5 miles, 500 feet of elevation, very steep decline. Some people say you shouldn't do it, but other people say you can. Well, I'm going to try it. Well, already this is giving some views. Uh, let me just pan past this tree. Can't even see the road down there. Somewhere. Somewhere down there. Whoa, I don't want to lose my trekking pole here. These are pretty sheer cliffs. Uh, you can see the lava flows down there where it's just sort of collapsed into the channel of the narrows yeah okay i'm liking it already it's a good it's a good change from the road the other thing that's great about this uh view is uh or at least this elevation is i'm able to get up and uh, get some coverage here. Only one bar, but I got data. So I was able to get the updated uh, gut hooks comments. Uh, good to have that. Makes me feel confident what's there and what's not there. So glad I came up here. Uh, it's gonna take a while to slog through this though. It's mostly rock hopping. Or right here, it's just deep sand, sort of like deep dry beach sand which is sort of like molasses going through take the bad with the good yeah more video of the Malpais this vast lava flow here Grants is somewhere in there, in the road, you know, hooks back beyond this promontory and then probably takes that real light band there all the way into town. This is amazing. <laughs> I was not expecting this. I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting this. I guess I hadn't done my research. Now I've gone around the bend, and uh, we get to, get to see the highway again. And actually, right down here is the parking area, the trailhead. That I hope to end up with, and you know, in one piece. So I have to come down way down one of these canyons way over here down that away yep 
Okay, some people have said it's really bad. I guess I'll find out. <laughs> well, this caused a whoa moment. Came around a bend, and I guess I didn't notice this before. The Ventana Arch, a natural arch. Huh. Which is the whole point of that trailhead. Yeah. Duh. Okay. I don't know that I go through the arch. No, I'm pretty sure I don't. Because I can see some sort of trail, you know, going way down there and then back up there. But yeah, isn't that cool? Ended up being a great day, really. Uh, <laughs> that uh, that trip over the the mesa at at uh, the Narrows was just uh, wonderful. Uh, I didn't hardly I hardly noticed my my um, shin splints going over going over the mountain. I mean, something about being on a trail, different different muscles, different different step, as opposed to going down the, the highway, boom, 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 and wow, hardly noticed it, uh, stunning views, uh, it was a little adventuresome coming down, uh, uh, there were some dicey comments uh, in, uh, in gut hooks about uh, how easy it is, and I ended up overshooting for a little bit, uh, the right canyon to come down right by the arch. Um, and then I was chilling out. I decided I needed a, needed a little rest right there by the trailhead. They had a little picnic area, kind of very similar to what you see in the background here. And uh, a woman comes up with her daughter, says, uh, what's your name? I said, uh, well, my name is Dave. What's your trail name? Farrell. We've been looking for you. You've been looking for me? Why would anybody be looking for me? <laughs> so this is the girlfriend of Sandpig, who, who is up there now. Uh, I've been sort of hiking along with him for a little while now, uh, sometimes uh, meeting several times during the day. And he and, and walking home are sort of uh, hiking together now. And yeah, so this woman w was, is his, his girlfriend. And so after offering me water and Gatorade and whatever else I wanted, uh, to drink, uh, she said, well, I can, they're up at the campground, and and we're, we're, we're looking for you because they were worried about you, because they hadn't seen you, and they expected to see you, and we knew that you had been up on this sort of dicey mesa thing at, at the Narrows. So, long story short, they drove me there. Sam Pig's brother is here now, come in from Albuquerque. He's going to be spending the weekend. And he's going to drive me back to where I left the trail six six miles back, and I'm going to have an easy two days getting in to town. I, I probably could make it in one day, but there's kind of no point because it's going to be weekend, and I want to go in and see the doctor when I'm there anyway. So why not take an easy couple days rather than one harder day? Because um, it is all road walk. It's all it's all, and not just dirt. It's down the highway, yeah. So anyway, here I am. And that's my tent right back there. I've had a taco, a sandwich, um, an orange. <laughs> the kindness of strangers 
is is so much sweeter um, because it is unexpected. And uh, I was just sort of enjoying the day, and that that trip over the over the mesa there at the Narrows that was the funnest thing I've done, not just today but this week. Uh, that was really cool. And then to end up here, you know, at a campground with lots of water. Uh, there's no water at the campground, but they brought the water in on the cars. So anyway, wonderful day, very memorable. Beautiful sunset tonight.